Can the carbohydrate conscious Cuisineer cater to a keto loving crowd? Or will the global fusion guru generate gorgeous green grub and graduate to the next level? Find out on this brand new episode of Show Me Chefs. from my mom and my grandma. And I started baking cheesecakes for my friends when I was about 19. And uh, I was working in an eye doctor's office here and went to a restaurant and told them, hey, you need to stop selling these cheesecakes and start selling mine and brought them a caramel apple cheesecake. And they tried it and immediately had me start making their cheesecakes for them. I worked there part time and then opened a bakery and when the bakery closed, Bread and Butter was opening. I messaged uh, their Facebook page and I was like, hey, you should sell my cheesecakes. I didn't know Erin at the time, but she messaged me and she said, uh, come, come down here and talk to us. So I did and I've been here since the day that they opened. Uh, first baking and now I'm managing and baking. I have never been in a cooking competition like Show Me Chefs. I did do a baking competition um, two years in a row. They have a cupcake competition at the Iron Horse Festival here. And the first year I entered, I won first place. And the second year I entered, I won second. I am really excited going into the competition and incredibly nervous that there's gonna be things that I've never worked with before. As a chef, what really got me into the chef field is I was walking through the halls of the Culinary Institute of America and I saw a sign and it said, do you want to make money? Do you want to travel the world? And do you want to cook for the rich and famous? And I was like, yes, yes, and yes. I did learn a lot of cooking from my meemaw. My first job was at Elks Lodge at the age of 14, where I started as a, a bus, bus boy slash dishwasher slash everything. But when I really refined my skills was when I went to the Culinary Institute of America in Hyde Park, New York, and that's when I really brought everything together. So from there on, I became a private yacht chef, and that lasted for about 12 years. But at the time, I had two daughters, and I wanted to come home. I wanted to watch them walk and crawl and play games and all that stuff, so my yachting career came to a head. So we have formed a company as we've been transpiring through the store phase and we have an awesome location here. We have a full kitchen in the back. Um, so we made a studio kitchen in the front where we're going to be doing cooking classes, little private events. We also do high-end private catering with Allen Event Group. So I'm going to be doing some of what I used to do on the private yachts, but in this area. So I decided to do Show Me Chefs because I really wanted to challenge myself and see what I'm made of. I wanted to go against other chefs. I've always seen everybody on TV that has 30 minutes to cook something. I'm always critiquing the shows. I wanted to put myself out there and really see what I can do. Awesome. All right, well, we're going to get kicked off today with our appetizer round. You'll each have 20 minutes to craft the perfect appetizer using our mystery ingredients. And keep in mind, whoever wins this round gets a little bit of an advantage in the entree round, whereas the loser of this round will have to deal with a penalty. I feel like you guys have some awesome things in your heads, and you're going to do something crazy to us. So I'm really hoping that I win so I don't get that handicap on myself. <laughs> All right, are you ready to see your mystery ingredients? Ready. Yes, we are. Let's do it. Today you'll be crafting your appetizers with ground goat from Morning Sun Farms, marinated feta from Terrell Creek, and grapefruit peel from Chabam Tea and Spice. Of course, you'll both have full use of the pantry provided by Cisco, as well as the spice rack provided by Chabam Tea and Spices. When I saw the mystery basket reveal, I was relieved because I'm familiar with everything and it clicked pretty instantly what I was going to do. All right, chefs, are you ready? Ready. All right, your 20 minutes starts now. I haven't cooked a lot with the goat before, but very excited to use the, uh, the feta. Our judges for today's episode, once again, we welcome back Mary Fawcett from Bambino's Cafe right here in Springfield, Missouri. From Cellar and Plate, we have Mary Guccioni. And of course, returning head judge, Angelo Wanathantri from Bark Catering. How are you guys doing? Excellent. You excited for this? Yep, we got two great chefs once again. 
uh, going head to head. Very excited to see what you know they can come up with for yeah. the appetizer round. Looks like Paul went to the uh, food processor right off the bat. Paul, what's in that processor? Is the grapefruit. Grapefruit, yeah. I made okay. a grapefruit skin blanc. I did kind of light on the grapefruit skin so it wasn't too bitter. He's got heavy cream out too. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things in the whole world. Today's word of the day is bard. To bard is to cover meat with fat. So I've been barded <laughs> and I need to hit the gym. 15 minutes left on that clock. 15 minutes, chefs. Thank you, Chef. Chef Paul, so what's, uh, what's, what's happening in your mind right now? When I saw the lamb and the feta, I thought of a crazy roulade idea. Let's see if we can make it happen. Whenever I saw the mystery basket, I instantly thought of a goat roulade. The good thing about Paul is he always trying something new. Right. You know, it's not like he's going to the same old, same old deal. Of, you know, see, he always trying to make something happen with what he got. So that's what's exciting about Paul. Chef Lorelai, what, what are you, uh, you making a crostini? What's happening in uh, your world right now? What are uh, you thinking about? Chaos in my brain right now. Okay. <laughs> Trying to focus and concentrate. Yeah, I'm gonna leave you alone a little bit to get that going, okay? This season on Show Me Chefs, we've moved into a brand new kitchen here at the beautiful Grey Rocks Event Center. We sent field host Joey Fittick out to talk to the owner, Sean, about this wonderful venue that Show Me Chefs and the community calls home. Started doing events for area charities 23 years ago. And just kind of like the idea of giving people my um, efforts to try to, I don't know, gain some kind of community involvement in my life. This was an old uh, door manufacturing building. So this building definitely didn't house a kitchen. I've got a million little stories and wouldn't trade any of it for anything, but it was uh, very difficult to say the least. A lot of really early mornings, a lot of really long nights. I learned a lot from this opportunity that was, again, that we made for ourselves, but that we were given through the city and through our neighbors around and uh, community foundation next door. A lot of different people are involved in it and uh, cooking demonstrations would be one example of what we use the building for. Um, another would be just uh, smaller events. Very appreciative of everything and uh, you guys being involved with the new building and trying to, I don't know, make it stand on its own, which is all we ever really want anyway. You know, I absolutely love this new space. Joey, how does this space compare to what you had on season three? Well, we actually have deep fryers here and we have the grill and there's so much more room to work. It's pretty nice, I've gotta say. The chefs that get to work on this set are very lucky. Yeah, I mean, speaking of places to work, this new bar for pairings is amazing. Let's go to Mary and see what we have for our pairing today. Sounds good. So today we're gonna be doing a Colin style cocktail and it's going to have cardamom and coriander infused gin with a thyme shrub that uses red wine vinegar and then fresh lemon juice. And then we're going to be using Thai and Timber's Cherry Street Sour, which is a kettle sour ale. Yes, since the cardamom is such a prominent flavor, it can overpower that thyme shrub that I have in here. And so we're just gonna put a nice bouquet of thyme on the nose of the cocktail so that the palate can be sure to pick those up. Yet again, another beautiful cocktail done by Mary from the Vanderbilt Hotel at the order. Thank you very much, Mary. These are beautiful. Our judges are gonna love oh, these. Oh, wow. Excellent. Tastes a little like a dirty martini. Yes. Yes. It, 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 uh, you know, the coriander and cardamom gin. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Delicious. Nice. Absolutely delicious. Chefs, we have 10 minutes remaining on that clock. Taro Creek, love them. I actually love the marinated Taro Creek feta. It's one of my favorite ingredients that I use all the time. What is that? What did you just put there? We got the Taro Creek feta. Feta. We're going to throw this in that goat. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you like it a little spicy. What did you find in the pantry? Spicy hot fried chili paste. Oh, wow. OK. That should go really, really nicely with the sweetness from the grapefruit peel. Yeah. I'm excited about that. <laughs> Chef Lorelai, what are you chopping now? Olives. So savory. feta, olives, I mean, in yeah. the same. Uh, so we're going to Mediterranean. Greek, Mediterranean, Mediterranean, yeah. My dish is a Mediterranean ragu bruschetta. Um, I sauteed the goat with mushrooms, olives, some vodka marinara. And she's really, truly doing a Christini 
you know, roasted garlic rub. Exactly. And it's kind of cool to see different different personalities and chefs. Oh, definitely. You know. She's she's a thinker. She's a thinker and he's a showman. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right, chefs, there's five minutes remaining on that clock. Only five minutes. This is the time to think about plating, uh, presentation. I'm amazed that they are as calm as they are and um, thinks I would literally be running right now. Chef Paul is going for the plates. Yeah. Is that ricotta or cream cheese? What did you use there? Uh, ricotta and some balsamic. Balsamic and ricotta. Spread it. Chef Lorelai has got her started. It looks like Paul has his started as well. Yeah. Chef Lorelai, is that a mushroom ragu? It is. It's a Mediterranean mushroom ragu. One minute. One minute remaining on that clock. Chef Paul is cutting. You like it? No, nope, it's going not back in. Nope, going back in. Uh-oh. The lamb goat, where, lamb goat was not you know, ready. Unfortunately, hopefully, I would turn that heat up as much as you can on that. Oh. We are at yeah, 30 right. seconds. 30 seconds remaining on that clock, chefs. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Chefs, please step away from oh. your plates. Oh. Yes. <laughs> See, that, that wow. just kind of gave me yeah, yeah, exactly right? Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh. <laughs> All right, Chef Lorelai, you are up first. Please explain to the judges your amazing looking creation here. Um, I did a Mediterranean style bruschetta, um, made a mushroom olive ragu with the goat, and added the grapefruit peel into that, and then the feta on top. First of all, the crostini <laughs> alone is done very well done. Thank you. What you paired really well was the earthiness that you normally get organically from the from the goat. Yes. With the olives and the mushrooms, which is beautiful, and the garlic. Thank you. You know, the only thing that, I mean, it's really good fish. The only thing, if I want to enhance it, I would have taken some lemon zest over it. Okay. And you would have done it, the presentation plus the taste would have been. When they brought the plate, the first thing that hit me was the lack of color. Okay. We need that pop, pop that, color. that brightness to it. Got it. Maybe in a flavor and in the color as well. Okay. But but the flavors are very well balanced. Very well okay. balanced. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Chef Lorelai. Thank, Thank you. All right. Next up, we have Chef Paul. Chef Paul, please explain your delicious dish. So I did a goat roulade. I did an applewood chipotle rub from Chabam. They have awesome spices and it's really flavorful. I stuffed it with a feta, and then I did a grapefruit skin blanc for the bottom. We'll see what you think. Now, we saw you running around trying to get the la I mean, using every second. I always try to push the envelope. I always try to do something, you know what I mean, that, that, can, that can't be done. So what do you think, man? I think this tastes really good. But I, I do think it needed a little more of that citrus or maybe like, you know, more some little lemon on top of that or something to bring that citrusy flavor out of your sauce. But otherwise, it's delicious. Thank you. Thank you. It tastes good, and I think it's done. I, obviously, he ran out of time on plate presentation or anything like that. But other than that, I like the blanc. The hot chili that you use, how did you use that? In so I put that inside with the feta, so you get I a little just bit of that of hot, them. a little acidity to go with that fry. Awesome, good job, well done. Thank you so much, Thank Chef you. Paul. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, it's time now for our judges to deliberate. We have a lot to talk about, so chefs, if you would, please leave the kitchen. All right, the chefs are gone. What's the dish? What's the dish? <laughs> What's the dish? It was a, kind of a um, cool surprise, uh, both of them. Mary Cachoni, yes. what do you think about Lorelei's dish? So when I saw her putting it together, I thought, uh, probably going to taste really good, but very mainstream, if you will. I was actually very surprised at how well all the flavors went together. So it was extremely well balanced, it was extremely well executed, and it was well plated. I agree. Now, Chef Paul Allen, what do you think about uh, his dish? Well, I thought it was full of flavor also. And really, you can't go wrong with fried food. I did think that the sauce needed a little bit of a punch to it. It was yeah. a little bit too bland. Other than that, I really did like that treatment of the, of the goat. Great, so do you think you will be able to come to a decision here? We, I we think do. we can, yeah. All right, the judges have deliberated and they have picked a winner. Let's bring back in our chefs. 
Well, the winner of the appetizer round is Lorelai. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations, Yay. Chef Lorelai. That's amazing. But Chef Paul, don't lose hope yet. There's still time to make it up in the next round, which is the entree round. So what we ask that you create is a low carb, keto friendly dish utilizing the mystery ingredients. So okay. keep that in mind. Got it. You will each have only one minute to get everything that you need from that pantry. Now, okay. Chef Lorelai, because you won this last challenge, you will have an additional 30 seconds, about halfway through the challenge, to go back and pick up anything else that you need from the pantry. Okay. Chef Paul, you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Chef Paul, since the, you did lose this first round, you will have to utilize a mystery extra ingredient in your dish. And we're gonna decide that here in just a moment. And I knew that they were gonna do something tricky because I lost, so I was nervous about that. <laughs> They're tricky here at Show Me Chefs. Here to tell us a little bit about your extra mystery ingredient, Chef Paul, Joey Fittick. All right, Chef Paul, we've got a lovely arrangement of a young green jackfruit, bitter melon, a Thai pickled olive, and then we have our delicious summer raspberry sauce. So I'm gonna have you pick a fruit with a number on the bottom of this. That number will determine which bonus item you get to take. Choose. One. Ooh, uh -oh. Chef Paul. For your bonus item, you will get Thai olives. Okay. Enjoy. All right, chefs, you know the rules, you know the limitations that you have. Are you ready to check out these mystery ingredients? All right. Your dishes must include duck breast from Providence Farms, kimchi, kohlrabi, and cured bacon from Gemstone Farm. And Joey has an extra ingredient for you as well. All right, chefs, I've got one last added bonus for you. Lorelei, you won this challenge, so you get the choice between barbecue, or bacon cheddar pork grind? Uh, barbecue. Barbecue? All right. Chef Paul, you get the bacon cheddar, buddy. Thank you. All right, chefs, are you ready for your minute to start? All right, your pantry time begins now. <sighs> when I found out about the pantry time challenge, I was excited and a little bit nervous. I was afraid I would forget something. 30 seconds on that clock. So my thoughts were, Paul, make sure you get your butt in gear and get all the things that you need. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Your pantry time is now over. All right, chefs, you have all of your ingredients. You have all of your pantry items. Your 35 minutes begins now. Just as usual, Chef Paul always writes everything down. He He's a very meticulous, yeah. very methodical meticulous. person that yeah. he likes to have everything written down, have an idea, and then he goes off the handle and starts doing things. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. She's diving right into the kohlrabi. So that's also the sign of a good, good chef because she's tasting everything as she goes. And as she's doing that, she's trying to figure out what flavor profile it is and how it's gonna be incorporated into the total dish. Yeah, yeah. so duck breast, mm -hmm. you know? I love duck. Um, but you gotta be very careful on that. It's good she's starting right off the bat. Yeah. I know. So, Chef Paul's going back to the spices. Mm -hmm. I think he's probably thinking of boosting a little bit more flavor than he got from the last round. Yeah. She's going with the bacon. Bacon will take a bit as well, not as long as the duck. But yeah. Depending on how crispy you want your bacon, yeah. it's going to take a minute. Let's go see what Joey learned at Gemstone Farms. Thank you very much, Nathan. Today we're out here at Grove Spring, Missouri at Gemstone Farms. Thank you so much, Tammy, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. You produce some of the best pork around that any of us has seen in a long time. Thank you. They're known as a large black hog. Can you tell us a little bit about your hogs? They kind of take care of themselves. In the fall, we'll give them pumpkins. In the summer, they get all the extra produce if we grow any from a garden, so. Nice. The, the culinary aspect, let's talk okay. about a little bit of the characteristics of the meat. Oh, well, it's got a nice micro marbling to it. It is often confused with beef because it's got such a nice red color to it. 
These guys are out able to roam. We've got 40 acres. They can go get whatever they want to eat. They can eat as much as they want. We don't have to sit there and doctor them. We don't have to worry about antibiotics. We don't have to worry about any of that. We're located in Marshfield, the Farmer's Market in Young's Shopping Center. You can find us in Springfield at the Greater Farmer's Market and the Battlefield Mall at Glenstone and Battlefield. All right, guys, I'm going to go head over here in the field and play with the hogs. I'll see you back at the studio. So the duck breasts on the grill, bacon's on the saute fine. pan. We have 30 minutes left on that clock. 30 minutes, chefs. Little egg whites or egg yolks. I don't know he's separate, which one he's going to use. Obviously, the yolk seems like. So Chef Paul, you know, with the penalty, do you think is, there's an advantage or disadvantage? I mean, what penalty. <laughs> exactly, thank you. I love it, love to hear that. As I heard what my penalty was gonna be, I was a little relieved because they were just adding another ingredient and component as opposed to taking something away. So I was actually happy that I got something else to use instead of something like taking away my chef knife Well, what are we gonna pair today with this well, wonderful entree that we I thought we would pair maybe a little of the Bear Creek semi-dry white wine. This is a white tail. It's actually very nice. It's got a soft sweetness to it, so it should play well with the kimchi that we've got on the plates today. Nice. All right, why don't we go ahead and get the judges a drink, shall yeah, we? Yeah, it looks like they need one. Yeah. Yeah? Cheers. Cheers. From a pairing aspect, if they use any sort of heat, heated spice in this, this, this is going to yeah. pair extremely well. And I, you know, I think that's what they were talking about, the kimchi, the that kimchi was really... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's going to be yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. What would you charge me for a lemon? Uh, $50 million. <laughs> you take a check? <laughs> Look, he got the sauce going, except, you know, and, and you can see him methodically getting components ready. What do we need on that? A little acid? Some of the juice. A little acid here. Hopefully, at the end of time, he'll have time to put everything together. Chef Lorelai, how are you feeling right now? Uh, pretty good. I'm uh, making a chunky barbecue sauce. Chunky barbecue sauce. All right, Chef Lorelai, we are at 17 minutes. That means you have an additional 30 seconds to hit that pantry if you need anything else. Do you need anything, Chef Paul? No, you got it. Don't worry. You need all the help you're going to get over there. <laughs> <laughs> Six, five, four, three, two, one. She grabbed an orange. I feel like that extra 30 seconds was definitely vital for me. I was able to get the uh, citrus fruits that I wanted to add to that, to add some freshness to my taco. I have not seen Chef Paul cook. Is the duck breast in the oven, Chef Paul, or is it still marinating? Duck, I marinated in some uh, spicy Asian uh, sauce. Doing the main dish, I was trying to make sure that I could have it as hot as possible for the judges. So I was trying to stage myself and do the duck at the very end, get my vegetables hot, and try to build the layers so that it could be the best for the judges. 10 minutes on that clock. Uh, Laura, are you making a wrap, per se? Um, I'm making a take on Korean barbecue. Or... Okay. okay, very nice. nice. She's taking a little tangerine and making a some sort of a, a, I think we're gonna have a dressing. A dressing for the duck. She's really keeping with the traditions of Oriental cooking, Fair seems nice. like. In, in our restaurant, we, we we played it last minute hot coming out yes. to the table. Yeah. You know, I can see the smoke coming out of this plate. It's so pretty. Five minutes, chefs. We have five minutes mm -hmm. left. When we come back, we are going to find out what amazing creations our chefs have concocted for the judges. But before that, Joey and I have a little bit of trivia for you viewers at home. What fruit has the same consistency and texture as pulled pork? Think you know that answer? Tweet us your guess, and when we come back, we'll find out the answer. Before the break, we asked what fruit has the same consistency and texture as pulled pork? Joey, what's the answer? Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Jackfruit. 
jackfruit happens to have a very, 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 very pungent odor. And then whenever you cook it down, it's got the same consistency as pulled pork. It's actually pretty good once you get past the smell. We'll have to try it sometime. One minute, chefs, one minute only. Looks like Chef Lorelei's about ready. Yeah. What are you waiting on right now? What's in the... Um... We gonna finish that duck in there. We got a little hollandaise going on the veggies over here. So I chose hollandaise to, to elevate it, to give my, my dish a little bit of extra character. Coming in. There you go. Perfect timing. Like it hot for my judges. <laughs> 30 seconds on that clock. 30 seconds. Beautiful. Ah, ah, that ah, is that so is far, gorgeous. yeah. That is gorgeous. Get those plates finished. Is it, co is it cooked? No. No. Eight, seven, six. Put it on the plate. Five, four, three, two, one. Chefs, please step away from your plates. Thank you. Great job, guys. All right, first up. Again, coming in at the zero hour, we have Chef Paul. <laughs> zero Chef Paul, hour. Please, please explain your culinary masterpiece that you right. created for the judges. So I did duck, I did it nice and rare. I put an Asian marinade on the top of it. On the bottom it has kimchi, and then I did a, uh, the kohlrabi, uh, and I did that with a little bit of Asian marinade. And then on the side to kick it up and elevate a little bit, I did a hollandaise to top the, the wild mushroom mix with asparagus. And then I did a little crunch of the uh, pork rinds on top. Not too much, but just for a little bit of the kick on the duck. Actually, the kohlrabi, the bacon, the kimchi, all goes together. I'm gonna really you cook the duck a little longer. It's delicious. Everything it is, is amazing. Thank you. Um, I'm having a little bit of trouble with the duck. Correct, correct. <laughs> and the flavor you put this on, it's pretty good. All right, great. Well, thank you so much, Chef Paul. Thank you. Chef Lorelai, you are up next. Please explain your culinary masterpiece. I did a take on Korean barbecue. I grilled the duck breast. I mixed the kohlrabi with the kimchi and some bean sprouts to give it some crunch. Okay. And added some Greek yogurt to that. And then on top of that, I made a chunky barbecue sauce. I made a sour cream with some orange, tangerine. The orange is just exploding. It is absolutely delicious. It goes so well with duck and everything else you have going on. What do you think, Mary? This is delicious. This thank is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you so much, Chef Thank Lola. you. Chefs, you're both bringing it for this competition today, but the judges need to deliberate, so if you would, please leave the kitchen. Thank you. Thank you, judges. All right, lots of complex flavors happening. What did we think of the, the chef's uh, dishes this time? Elevated. Great. From, from round one. So you it's can nice tell they're getting they a little had bit, time. They to... have time. They were getting a little more comfortable. Mary, I'm, I mean, you've been um, kind of observing Lorelai and, mm -hmm. and kind of seeing what she's doing. What uh, what do you think about her entree dish? Um, it was almost perfect. She incorporated the kimchi rather than just leaving it on its own. The duck was done perfectly. Great. All right. Well, we think we were going to be able to figure out a winner. Yeah. All right. Let's bring those chefs back in. Welcome back, chefs. Thank you. All right. No Rich Foods episode can be complete without the richest course of all, dessert. In this round, you will each have 25 minutes to create an amazing dessert using a few mystery ingredients. I am super excited going into the dessert round. If I fail this, then I can't go back to my job. Uh, desserts are my forte, so I'm, I'm really excited about this, this part. My opponent is a baker, a master baker. So this will be the most challenging round, so I really have to up my game for the dessert. All right, chefs, are you ready to see your mystery ingredients? Ready. Let's do it. This time, you'll be using gooseberry black walnut jam from Persimmon Hills, plain cheese curds from Edgewood Creamery, Barbados fruit tea, and honey sun plums. I was excited to see the plums and uh, the cheese also, and curious to figure out in my mind what I was gonna do with it. <laughs> All right, chefs, yes. your 25 minutes begins now. The dessert round. I was very delighted that there was no salmon or meatloaf or any kind of savory dishes besides the cheese. So I was very excited to see that. Chef Paul has heavy. regular sugar, date sugar, oh, and heavy cream. 
And I believe butter and maybe cream cheese, I don't know. Eggs, I know. Chef Lorelei, I saw her grab brown sugar, and she's got heavy cream as well. Yeah. Being a baker, she might have an advantage. That's what I was thinking as well. But I'm kind of curious what Chef Paul can uh, come up with as a dessert. Without giving out your secrets, what are you thinking of making right now? I'm thinking beignet. Okay. Chef Lorelei, what are you whisking over there? Uh, I'm gonna make a custard. You're making a custard? Mm hmm Now, being a baker, ready. do you make a lot of desserts? Every day. <laughs> <laughs> Every day, you say Every that? day. You know, Joey, I'm in the mood for some dessert. Let's bring out the dessert cart. Now, today's dessert cart is brought to us by The Urban Cup. Joey, tell me a little bit about The Urban Cup. All right, so The Urban Cup is actually located here in Springfield, Missouri. They've got great parking, easy to get to. We are actually gonna be featuring their strawberry cheesecake, their cookies and cream, the walnut carrot cake, and of course, the oh so delectable mint chocolate chip. Those look amazing. Now, and they also specialize in gluten-free options as well. They do, they have a great selection of gluten-free. Great, and so you have a coffee or tea for us to pair with this today? Actually, I've got something that's both. So I've got a cascara. So the pairing that Joey has prepared for us today with these delicious cupcakes is the cascara, and it is from the Coffee Ethic in downtown Springfield. Sounds like it's really gonna enhance the flavors. Wow, it's pretty good. Does it taste now, like tea? This, yeah, it, it tastes like tea, but it almost tastes like a little bit of a coffee flavor into it. Yeah. I mean, in uh, oh, just oh. tasting the product, I know the quality. It's oh, very, yes. very good. We got a little plum, and do we have apple? Or what, what's the other? Uh... So Barbados fruit tea is the other thing. And I got my fruit in here uh, with a little bit of sugar. I'm gonna put a little bit of butter. Oh my gosh, that's gonna be good. I hear we have a wine connoisseur as a judge today, so I figured I'd impress her with my hillbilly persuasion. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Chefs, we have 10 minutes left on that clock. Only 10 minutes. Okay. Now I see Chef Lorelei going into the cheese curds. Mm -hmm. Looks like she's going to melt them. So, Chef Paul, you're giving us a little heart attacks because the way you go, you have so much good things going on. I want you to finish and make sure you get that the dessert round complete. So he's mm -hmm. oh, putting the batter he's in. He's dropping them in. Dropping in the batter in the fry. Okay, I hope There he... we go. Hey, Joey. Mm. I got another joke for you. Okay, lay it on me. What's a Fruit Spread's favorite horror movie? Oh, uh, I don't know, what? Silence of the Jams. Uh. <laughs> oh, he's got him up. I think they do, okay. Oh, they good. Yeah. They look good. Look at he's happy. Yep. <laughs> I like that smile. We're in the experimental kitchen over here. In beignet batter, it really needs to be cold, and it was a little bit warm. So when I did, it scattered in the fryer, and I thought in my mind, this is this is like fairy tale right now. So I did a rename on it. I had this fairy tale dough that came out. All oh, it had height and pop on it. <laughs> At first, I was very nervous. But then I was like, let's just rename it, name it in your head, and let's roll with the punches. All right, chefs, we have five minutes left on that clock. Only five minutes remain. He checks them out. Five minutes, all right. This is gonna be a warm custard. Chef Lorelei, did you use a double boil method to make that custard, or how did you use it? You just no, tempered it? directly on the heat. Uh, do my milk and sugars and flour first, and then uh, incorporate that into the egg yolks so I don't curdle those. Okay. The compote, I used the jam that we got and the plums, plus I added some fresh blueberries, vodka, and then I did a fleur de sel uh, salt on top of that. The Ozarks has some of the best berries. Let's join field host Joey Fittick to find out where to pick them. Today we're here at the gorgeous Persimmon Hills Farm. We're gonna be taking a look at some of the great berries that they have out here, and especially blueberries. Chocked full of antioxidants, and they help keep in check all those free radicals, man. Come with me and see if we can find some super fruit. My husband and I uh, were both working in the public health field, but we were really foodies, just love fresh fruits and 
uh, U Pick Farms, and we really became interested in the idea of having a farm down here, and blueberries were something that we were interested in. We studied horticulture out there and beekeeping and a lot of things that go with it. We have about 13 different varieties from early to late season so that our blueberry season ends up being five to six weeks. We've grown to eight acres of blueberries, which is about 9,000 blueberry plants, about a half acre of blackberries. We also grow elderberries and gooseberries and shiitake mushrooms. Or we have the restaurant where people can have breakfast with our giant blueberry thunder muffins, sample our other products. We started with jam. We have five different varieties of syrup, barbecue sauce, pepper jams, and those are available in our farm store. We have everything that people need to pick berries. You don't have to bring buckets or anything else. All right, guys, I'm going to send it back to you. It's full swing out here. We're going to get to pick it. Look at the color. The color is absolutely vibrant. Here's where it's going to get fun. It's a new invention. Because I always know exactly what I'm doing. Sometimes I just give it a new name. And then the caramel sauce came out really, really nicely. There's this beautiful tea reduction that we got to use. And I added that into the sauce. And everything really came in together. That was when I was at my happiest point, was when I was plating up my dessert. One minute, chefs. We have one minute to complete your culinary masterpiece. Give me some powdered sugar on those beignets. Yeah. Thirty seconds. Home stretch. Oh, he made home homemade so, whipped homemade cream. Whipped cream. Very nice. I think Chef Paul has probably outdone himself this time around. I think he has. All right, we're at 10, 9, 8, Four 7, done. 6, done. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Chef, yes. are done. Good, Good job. job. <laughs> All right, Chef Lorelei, you are up first. Can you please explain your delicious looking dessert to the judges? Hey. Uh, yes, I made a lavender and berry tea custard with a compote with the plums and that jam. And then I fried the cheese and made some cheese crisp and then sprinkled a little fleur de sel on top. Wow. So you, have, you use the tea to make the custard? Yes. I saw you having a hard time with your pan. What was that? Did you try oh, to fry no, the cheese? No, I was frying the cheese. So okay. I wanted oh. to get the cheese crisp, so oh. I was scraping that crispy part of the cheese off of there. Gotcha. You can totally taste the tea, mm -hmm. which is absolutely beautiful. Thank you. It's beautiful. I was going to be a hard on you because of the fried cheese, but I took a bite with that on that, and now I'm like, hmm, I can't do that to you. <laughs> Chef Mary, oh. are you enjoying it as well? Yes, I am. Looks like there's a lot of different flavors in there. There are a lot of different flavors. I think a little bit more, like a, some fresh blueberries on top of those. Fresh. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank Delicious. you so much, Chef Lorelai. All right, Chef Paul, this could be your chance for some sweet revenge from losing that first round. Uh, give us a, a little bit of insight into what you've created here. So I did a fairy tale fried dough. It's got cheese curds on top of it. And it's almost like a fairy tale, especially when you have that with the Moscato. I made my own caramel sauce, and then I did the Date Lady caramel drizzle, which is amazing. And then I took a tea reduction. I added that to my fruit with the pears and the blueberries, and then I also did some freshly whipped cream. Actually, it's a perfect dish. <laughs> Chef Paul, I like it. There's nothing much I can do to say about it right now. It's, it's good. It's, it's, very it's good. absolutely delicious. Yeah. The dough is so light and airy. It's just beautiful. It is. It's really, really pretty. Like a fairy tale? It is a fairy tale. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Chef Paul. Thank you. This round was sweet, but the judges have the bitter job of trying to decide who the winner is. So as they deliberate, we ask that the chefs please exit the kitchen. All right, judges. The chefs are away so the judges can play. OK. Let's talk about awesome. this. You know, Chef Paul did a good job this time. I appreciate it. It was not too sweet because he mentioned that. he, In his mind, he made it with a pairing of a, a sweet wine to go along with yeah, it that. It seemed like he got exactly what he wanted on that plate. Uh, but the Marys are seeming like they might disagree a little. I think so. So, I think so, so. what were your thoughts on the dish? I thought it lacked flavor. I mean, I've had beignets in beignet. New Orleans, <laughs> and that did not taste like a beignet at all to me. He's very ambitious. I really think that Lorelai, she just very calmly and 
competently sets out to produce some things that you know are very, <clears throat> very intense and in yeah. flavor. It was beautiful as well, and it seemed like there were right. lots of things going on there. there. Were what did you think about Lorelei's dish? I have sometimes I have an issue with texture, and so something like a hot custard is not appealing to me. And right. I was concerned that there wasn't going to be any crunchiness to it, that it was just going to be a bowl of hot whatever. But she had that cheese. She she fried the cheese until it was crispy and crunchy, and then she sprinkled it on top, and it changed everything. It gave a savory aspect to it. It gave the crunch that I was looking for. The berries were gorgeous. It was well balanced. All right, judges, we've reached a verdict. Yes, we have. Let's bring in the accused. Chef Lorelei, Chef Paul, for three no-holds-barred rounds, you guys have really brought your A-game and left the judges infatuated, but there can be only one winner. Let's talk just a little bit about the journey that we've seen from these amazing chefs today. Chef Mary, let us uh, in on a little bit of, of Lorelei's journey that you've seen. Well. She seemed so calm. She didn't have that kind of chefy edge that we <laughs> usually see, but she absolutely knocked our socks off. She did such a great job today. Everything she did was really well executed and well thought out, lots of good flavors, and uh, we're just happy she came today. Thank you. Fantastic. Chef Mary, talk to us a little bit about Chef Paul. Chef Paul, it, it, the way he cooks is a lot like your personality. It's big and it's bold and and it's crazy and it's amazing. And and the fusions that you were able to create today, the plating was beautiful. You had a couple of issues with the with the the duck not being fully cooked all the way through and you didn't get to finish the first. You you do it. You do it every time. You you're you're a crazy talented chef and uh, the flavors were fantastic. Obviously there's only one winner, right? Oh yeah. But I do want to make a couple of comments. Chef Lorelai, you, you surprised us uh, you. with your, you know, you have a very calm, cool personality. I don't know yes. if you always like that. Yes, always. Okay. <laughs> always. But you did, um, you know, surprise us giving a good appetizer, a good entree, and a very tasty dessert. Thank you. And the same token, I think Chef Paul is used to doing big competitions. Yes. To the brink of last moment, make sure right. everything's right. Right. Uh, and I think because of that, I think not cooking duck all the way through uh, did hurt him. It, it hurt him. You know. Absolutely. So by saying that, Chef Aurelai, you were the winner. Ah! <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> well Thank done. you. Well done. We're very proud Thank of you. you. I did not expect to win coming into this. I knew that I would uh, do the best that I could, but I wasn't expecting that at all. Thank you. Good job. You did Thank awesome. you so much. Thank you. Uh, I kind of went for the gold and for the victory and probably put a little bit too much on my plate. And every time I would get down for plate up, it would be to the very last second. And uh, and so I think I would do things a little bit differently, but I think that their, their critique was very well, very good. And I learned a lot from this. Chefs, Thank it was so neck much. and neck. Thank you both so much. Chef Paul, even though you didn't win the competition today, you brought an amazing personality and all those killer skills that you have, and it was a pleasure to watch you work. And Absolutely. for sharing that with us in the community, thank you so, so yes. very much. You're welcome. And it Chef Lorelai, we will be seeing you in the semifinals. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Join us on the next episode as two brand new chefs battle it out right here in the Grey Rocks kitchen for their chance at the semifinals on the next episode of Show Me Chef. I have an offer for you. An offer you might want to refuse or you might not. You are only able to utilize the pantry for the first minute. Oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> this first episode of Show Me Chefs was a, a great experience for me, and I am ready to move on to the next round and win that one also.